For more now, and Greg Pocock, thank you for that. I'm joined by retired Army Lieutenant General John, uh, Tom Spohr, a director of the Heritage Foundation Center for National Defense. All right, so this is not the first time that North Korea has come out and bragged about some kind of thing that they've got planned on one of our American holidays. And so it's been Fourth of July in the past, numerous missiles were fired back in the day, and now a Christmas surprise. Um, why is North Korea doing this now? Well, North Korea does not see a way for success right now in the current path, and so they're trying to spark, uh, create some disruption in order to get the United States really to lessen the uh, group of comprehensive economic sanctions that the United States and the rest of the world have put on top of North Korea. Their economy is suffering. Uh, Kim would like to find some break, some way to create a division among the allies and get his economy going again. I mean, that's not going to work. It's not going to happen. I mean, this has been done not just during this administration, but in administrations in the past. When North Korea tries to warn the United States and the Western world that they want these sanctions to be lifted by test firing missiles, what do they get? More sanctions. So we know where the president's going with this. My question to you is John Bolton's remarks about how we have not been tough enough on this rogue regime. In particular, the president who was hoping diplomacy would work and he has learned the hard way that diplomacy doesn't seem to be working. Has the president played into North Korea's hands or was he right to talk with Kim Jong-un? No, I think, Julie, he was, that was, took the right course of action yeah. to talk to Kim. Uh, this was the right path. Uh, Ambassador Bolton is right as well, though. The sanctions that we've applied are not the maximum sanctions. There are plenty of people that are cheating, China among them, uh, uh, dodging the sanctions. And so we can be tougher, the world can be tougher on North Korea. I don't think, also, you know, we have suspended military exercises. I think it's probably time. We Bring look back. at restarting the military exercises, yes. Should we add more troops to South Korea? I mean, there was a pullout. I mean, the, Kim Jong-un has basically said two things need to happen in order for him to stop test-firing missiles. That means lift sanctions and pull U.S. troops out of the South Korea, neither of which are going to happen. No, I think you're right. Uh, in fact, the Congress just put in law the fact that we can't reduce the number of troops in South Korea without the Secretary of Defense testifying that it's in the best interest of the United States. So mm -hmm. we've got about 28,000 troops in South Korea now. That's fine. The South Korean is, South Korea is a very capable uh, military. So we don't need more troops there, and we ought not to take away from what we have there as well. So what's Kim's calculus here? I mean, is there a political solution? Uh, where does China and Japan come in? Yeah, so it's football season. He's throwing a Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. He's trying to upset things and, and make something happen. As you pointed out, you know, firing a missile, uh, testing a nuclear weapon, none of those things are going to work in his favor. And it's really going to just solidify the coalition that's already fairly solidified against him right now. All right, uh, Lieutenant uh, General Tom Spohr, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.